Hi, I'm Dr. Elise Day, and this brief session is on nerves as causing pelvic pain. All pain is transmitted via nerves and processed in the brain. Lucky for us, our bodies have roadmaps called dermatome maps. These skin patterns of pain can indicate which nerves are causing problems in order to help us establish a diagnosis. We should suspect nerve pain when there is pain, tingling, numbness, and or weakness in the dermatome of the nerve or nerves. The dermatome is the area of the skin that the nerve serves. The myotome is the muscle that the nerve serves. And after watching this video, you may want to bring screenshots to your provider to see if you might benefit from evaluation with a neurologist, neurosurgeon, pain management doctor, urologist, physical therapist, and maybe even a psychologist to figure out what your diagnosis is and how to manage it. Here's an example. Most people have heard about sciatica. The sciatic nerve pain can come from problems in the spine or from a muscle like the piriformis muscle compressing it. You can see on the dermatome map on the right that the yellow, red, green, and brown areas are all served by the sciatic nerve. If you have pain in this distribution, you may have sciatica. Dermatome maps are nerve sensation patterns that are well described and mapped out in the human body. These diagrams indicate whether your pain is in a particular nerve pattern. In order to interpret your pain correctly, find whether your pain matches the colors, which are the peripheral nerves, or the black lines, which are the spinal nerve roots. So what is a spinal nerve root? Here's the third lumbar nerve and is exiting the natural opening in the bones of your spinal column. If the nerve's getting pinched by a herniated disc, it can cause pain within these black lines in the L3 lumbar third dermatome. And you can see the mapping of L3 on the front and the back of the body. The dermatome pattern can lead to suspicion of a particular diagnosis. For example, there's a problem in the sacral spine called Tarloff cyst. These cysts are fluid dilations near the spinal nerve roots. They are present in 15% of individuals, but only cause symptoms in 15% of those people. So they are often ignored when seen on MRI, assuming that all of them are asymptomatic. The Tarloff cysts pictured here are on both sides and are big enough to impact both S2 and S3 nerve root levels. So this patient may have genital pain as well as pain running down the leg to the inside of the foot from S2, and since the cysts are on both sides, the pain is on both sides. Furthermore, since the sacral nerves serve the bowel, bladder, and sexual function, there may be associated organ symptoms. Many healthcare professionals do not understand how to interpret this combination of symptoms, so you may need to bring in a diagram like this asking for neurological evaluation. The patient whose MRI you see here suffered for years before getting the correct diagnosis and surgical management because nobody looked at the dermatome map or knew how to put it all together. When nerves are compressed in the spine, this is now a central rather than peripheral nervous system issue, and there may be pain, tingling, numbness, and muscle weakness from this level down on both sides. This problem can be sudden, in which case an emergency room visit is in order, or it can be a slow process, in which case you may be seeing falls, weakness, and changes in bowel, bladder, and sexual function progress over time. There are a number of nerves within the abdominal wall and also nerves that pass through the pelvis that can be trapped after a surgical incision, secondary to body mechanics, for example, sitting too much. So here, for example, is the course of the ilioinguinal nerve, which can be injured during an incision for inguinal hernia repair, C-section, or laparoscopic surgery. The distribution of the pudendal nerve, which hooks around the sit bones, is pictured here in pink. So if your pain is only in this area, especially if it's only on one side, you may have pudendal neuropathy from prolonged sitting on hard surfaces, bicycle riding, childbirth, there are a number of causes. Alternately, if you have pain in the pink area, but that is also running down along the course of the S2 black lines, this would be pain in the nerve root distribution from the second sacral nerve root. Therefore, your diagnostic efforts should be directed more toward the sacral spine rather than the pudendal nerve.
In the male, the green area here indicates a problem with the genitofemoral nerve, another nerve that can be injured during inguinal hernia repair. But if the pain is located beyond the green, down the leg in the sacral second nerve root distribution, again, the attention should be on the sacral spine. It's important to remember that many things can cause pelvic pain, not just nerves. So if you have pain all over your body, you may have nerve problems starting in the brain or the neck with downstream effects on a variety of nerves. You could have Lyme disease, a rheumatologic condition, or a diffuse neuropathy called small fiber neuropathy. Small fiber neuropathy is sometimes present when a standard neurological evaluation is negative and is associated with pain, as well as autonomic nerve symptoms such as bowel and bladder problems, migraines, heart rhythm abnormalities, dizziness, heartburn, asthma, anxiety, and nerve pain in the stocking and glove distribution far out on the extremities. Mechanical issues with bones and joints, such as hip problems, can also cause pelvic pain. So on our channel, we do have a video of how to do a hip exam looking for causes of pelvic pain. And very frequently as a cause or contributor to pelvic pain, we see problems with the pelvic floor muscles called the levator muscles leading to pelvic pain and even nerve entrapment. Pelvic floor trained physical therapists can be located on the American Physical Therapy Association website. I hope this video helps and feel free to send this video link to your provider with your thoughts to ask for further advice. Thank you.